Religious experiences are a very interesting phenomenon and so are religious practices and praying in tongues is such a practice. Now we as neuroscientists were interested in whether there are some brain changes about those phenomena. Now praying in tongues is generally referred to as glossolalia. It comes from the Greek glossa and laleo which means speaking and language and tongues and as such people often refer to it as praying in tongues or speaking in tongues. To the outsider it sounds like gibberish and it sounds a little bit weird but for people who actually do that it is a very deep and tremendous spiritual experience. We often find that in Pentecostal churches and it goes back to the Bible and we find the first instances thereof in the book of Acts. But when we ask people why they do that they often say that they see it as a method to get into connection with God. Now there are several streams of research that deal with it we find linguistics and phonetics, we find health and psychology, we find sociology, creation of typologies, and of course, neuroscience, which is where we are working. There is one landmark study from Andrew Newberg, who analyzed five women from Pentecostal churches, and there he saw that there were activations in praying in tongues in both hemispheres of the brain, and there are reductions in the left hemisphere. Interestingly, Broca and Wernicke, which are the language areas, are not involved. So we were actually studying that ourselves and with a sample of 30 participants, 17 females and 13 males, we investigated that ourselves. They were all glossolalics, they were praying in tongues and we were doing MRI research, like brain scans, to see whether the structural brain situation changes. So we looked at the brain structures and not the activities and saw that there were some structural changes in the brain. Now you can do structural brain research or functional brain research and we did a structural brain research. So we were asking do some brain areas change in structure when people pray in tongues? And lay and behold that's what we found. There are two regions that are positively associated with the grey matter. So first we found a positive association with the left frontal pole this is a region associated with high-level executive control, with goal-oriented behavior, with multitasking and switching of internal and external attentional control. Interestingly, simultaneous interpreters also show increase in gray matter density, and so do our glossolalics. Now we found the same for the right middle frontal gyrus. This is a region responsible for interference, suppression and response inhibition. Now this could mean that people have glossolalic impulses that are being filtered out by this exact region. Now maybe perhaps the left frontal pole is responsible for monitoring the glossolalic impulses and screening when it is appropriate. And maybe the right middle frontal gyrus is a gatekeeper, letting it flow or holding it back when it is appropriate or not. Now as a conclusion we can say that praying in tongues is a spiritual practice which is helpful for the believer and it does not require specific language skills because language areas were not associated with it. It has to do with impulse regulations and executive control and it may have positive effects on brain alterations. So maybe it is also time for you to pray. Now if you like this video go over and uh, have a look at my YouTube channel.